Let's see if we can get a deal. One dial. One contract. It's been a minute. Hey, is John there? This is John. Hey, John, this is RJ Bates calling about your property there on Greenleaf. You had uh, entered it on my website. Are you still looking to sell that property? Uh, yes, possibly. Awesome. How much were you looking to get for that? Uh, 165000 165000 And you said it's tenant occupied, correct? Yep. How much are the tenants paying? And how long is the lease with them? Uh, it's month to month. Okay. And uh, how did you come to the, the price of 165 I had a realtor go through. Okay. And that's what they said they could get for you if they listed it? They actually said 175 Okay. I see a property that was probably 1,100 square feet larger, sold for 179. Uh, let me see. the The problem with 165 and 900 a month is that those numbers don't uh, really check out. Like it's not going to cash flow for me if I buy it at 165 and I've got a tenant in there only paying 900. So, are the tenants wanting to stay? Okay. How long have they been there? Um, since 2007. Okay. I mean, it's a, if they've been there 15 years, I'm assuming they don't want to go anywhere. Um, so if I come in and I buy it, I mean, it's kind of a weird situation because obviously if I, if I buy the property, I'm going to need them to pay a significantly larger amount on rent. I also don't want to just come in and, you know, disrupt their lives either. Um, and I'm assuming if they've been there for 15 years, the the property probably hasn't been rehabbed in that long as well, right? It hasn't been rehabbed, but it's in pretty good shape. Right. But, I mean, things like the kitchen and the bathrooms and flooring and things like that, have, have those been replaced? I mean, it's not in it's not in freshly rehabbed condition, but it is in good shape. It needs to be painted and little things fixed here and there. I mean, I just did a walkthrough on it. Okay. Hmm. I mean, would you be open to something creative as far as like seller finance or something like that? So cash only? Yeah. I just don't see how an investor is going to be able to come in and pay 165 in this circumstance. I mean, a tenant occupied property for 15 years. I mean, I know you're saying it's a good condition, but it's still not it's still gonna have at least a 15 year old kitchen and bathrooms and flooring and that's just not gonna push for full market value. And then also the fact that the the cash flow is just not there as far as nine hundred dollars a month. I mean, you're you're significantly below the one percent rule, which is kind of like the bare minimum that you can do as far I as the rental. Understand all this. You asked me what I wanted, and that's what I'm going to get for it. So, like, you're asking me to buy it. I didn't ask you to buy it. Well, actually, you came to my website and you you did ask me to buy it, so that's why I'm calling you. Yeah. Well, that's what. That's what I'm offering it to you for. So gotcha. Well, I'm just explaining as to why I, I can't do that, and maybe that could be information that you could take and 
because obviously you're looking to sell the property. So it's like, hey, I'm just explaining what any other buyer is probably going to explain to you. From I've already had it walk through with the local market, with the local realtor right there. Right. Did the it did the realtor rents. discuss with you the the tenant situation and the cash flow aspects of it? We're gonna have the we're gonna remove the tenant from it. Okay. So see, that's the first thing you're telling me that. So as a buyer, that would be like useful information. Yeah, I'm gonna remove the tenant. Okay. When I sell it. So you're gonna remove the tenant. And then it, but it's still going to, you're not going to do any rehab to the property, correct? Yeah, I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to paint everything and fix anything that's wrong and sell. Okay. Well, it sounds like you know what you want to do and you're in a good position there. So uh, I think I'll just carry on and call someone else. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Bye-bye. Hello, this is RJ. Somebody call me as Paul. Yeah, Paul, this is uh, RJ Bates. You had uh, entered your information on my website about selling your property there. Uh, just wanted to reach out and see if you're still interested in selling that property. Well, it depends. I'm in a, a position with it, but I, I'm kind of at work right now, so I won't be home until like six. Okay. Um, just You got like 30 seconds for me? I'm literally standing at a service counter. I'm the guy. <laughs> did did you, know, you did you have a price? I, I don't know, honestly. I don't know what I'm gonna do. At the the kitchen's mid reno, so it was almost like I need to finish it first. Nah. At the same time, I don't want you to finish it. I want to finish it. Yeah, no, I know you do because it's cheaper that way. <laughs> right. You know. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a few things that change in the house if you're looking up the specs. Mm -hmm. On of what it used to be, the the kitchen is now blown out to a big kitchen. So the bathroom's bigger than it was on the first floor. There's a sliding door in the back. There's a whole bunch of different things that I've done to the house upstairs. There's you know there's a hallway instead of having that walk through one room to the other. So there's there's a lot of changes that have been made off of what there was when I bought it. Gotcha. So it's kind of one of those things where somebody might want to come look because it changes that. You know, they, they valued the house at what it was when I got it, but nobody knows I did all that work, you know? Well, how much do you want to just walk away today? Uh, it all depends, man. I, I mean, that's that's a big that's a big thing right there. You know? I don't know how much it would cost you guys. I know you guys get, you know, you do all the work and stuff. You got your buddies and things that do that, but... As far as the kitchen and all that stuff, the house is valued at like three twenty. So you know what would it be with the finishing stuff? They'd have to look at it. You know, it's got a brand new heating system in the house. There's you know, there's brand new everything in there. Okay. New fuse box, new wire from outside to inside. The box outside the house with the meter on it. All of that stuff is brand new. It used to be hundred amp. It's two hundred amp now. It's, it's outfitted for two twenty. You know, like I did a lot of different upgrades that, you know, would change pricing, I guess. Yeah, I mean, listen, you you came to the website, you said you wanted to sell. So I, I listen, I just I like to do it straight and just instead of me going back and forth and haggling and doing all that, I just want you to tell me like, hey, man, if, if you could give me this number, then I'm happy to walk away with it because then I can say, yeah, I could do that or, or no, I can't. Um, and well, then, how long would I have to be able to move somewhere? Because I got six cars, a I give, garage. I give you as long as you need. I mean, that's what I'm saying. I mean, I'm not a realtor. I'm not. I'm just a buyer. So I listen. You say, yeah. hey, I need 90 days, then I can give you 90 days. If you say, hey, I, yeah. I need two weeks, then I can do that as well. Well, I don't know. That's one of those things. If I can get, you know, close to three would be great. Okay. Close to three. Yeah. And then how long would you need? Uh, well, I'm going to be able to find somewhere to go. Right. That's a touchy thing too, you know. So what are you thinking about, like renting somewhere or buying another place? I would like to go into another place that has some land and maybe, you know, like a little shit box house that I got knocked down and put in one. Mm-hmm. 
You know, you guys got anything like that local to me? Not local, no, because everything just goes so fast. But I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, it's something that we can start looking for as well. I mean, because we do a lot of direct to seller marketing like this, so we can yeah. try to find something for you. Um, but I mean, I know you're at work, so you can just answer vaguely on this, but th this is kind of cautious because of the, like you, you said that you were behind on the mortgage, right? So we, we do need to move quickly, right? So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm at a point right now. Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, I, I also could be a solution there where, you know, we can, we can make this move quickly. Um, there could also be something where we could do as far as just taking over the payments on that as well. So there's a lot of yeah. different options that we can do there. Uh, right. So I, I think we could definitely work something out. So I, right, I, listen, I, I know you're, you're at work. Are to talk Thursday? Yeah. Yeah, I can call you on Thursday. All right. Yeah. Give me a call Thursday. Like uh, around, around this time would be fine. Okay. Around this I, time. I I'm off over here Thursday. All right. And and real quickly, you, you, owe, you only owe like 100 on this, right? Yep. All right. All right, so yeah, let me let me do some more research on this, try to figure out what we can do, and uh, I'm sure we can figure something out there. I'll call you back on Thursday around this time, okay? All right, man. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, thanks. Yeah. Bye. Oh, I thought you were in yesterday. You didn't call it. Oh, today? No. Look at this shirt. Yeah, I saw I'm seeing it. Yeah, give a fuck. Hey, it's Kevin there. Who's Kevin? Hey, Kevin. Uh, this is RJ calling you about your property there on Locust. Um, How you doing, buddy? Good. Hey, um, so I think we were under contract like a long time ago on this property. Something happened. I, I can't remember. Y'all got upset with us or something or another. Anyways, you came back to my website and you said you need to sell it behind on your mortgage and whatnot. So I just want to see if you were ready to do business with us. I'm ready. Yeah, I was ready. Whatever happened, uh, I don't have a clue. It's, it's nice to talk to you, RJ. How are you doing today? Good. Well, how much we how much we talking? What, what do we need to get this property uh, off your hands? Are you in Butte or are you out of town? No, I'm out of town. Um, are you coming this way in the near future or we're just talking right now? No, we're just talking right now. But I've got, listen, I've got somebody there that can come see it this week, but we're we're ready to move forward. I've already seen your property. I got pictures of your property. I got everything ready to go. Do you want the whole thing? It's two separate. Uh, it's it's twenty four oh three and twenty four oh five. They're two separate lots. <clears throat> There's four small ones. Two small ones. The thirty. They used to be thirty by one hundred and ten. Now they want sixty by one hundred and ten. So. <clears throat> The original survey was four small lots, 10, 11, 12, and 13. 10 and 11 make lot make the address of 2405, and uh, 12 and 13 make 2403. Okay. And it goes uphill and downhill. Uh, if you, if you want to you wanna buy all of it, or you just want to buy the house on the lot, 2403? How much for all of it? 149. I just want to know. How much for just the house? One twenty nine. Okay. Well, something happened. One nineteen. <laughs> no, I mean something happened. We we were under contract for a lot less. I mean, let me pull this up real quick. I mean, we were we were at like we were at like eighty thousand. So well, I, you were doing that with my mom. Yeah. Well, yes. You guys wanted just a house. You want just a house for like eighty or ninety, and uh, she gets half, and I get half. I don't care. Because she and I have it, but she didn't put my name on the deed. She was supposed to. So her name is, she has. That's what happened is we yeah. were dealing with her. And I think that's what happened. She came back and said you were upset because she, she so just. I put, I put 50, we bought it for 50 and I worked for two years and put 50,000 cash into it. And she wouldn't refinance it. Gotcha. So everything that was done a year and a half ago is start, has deteriorated. Not the work I did, but the next work to finish the interior and put new windows in and things like that. Nothing happened. She left. And she didn't help you me. Buy, she no, your buyer is good. Right? You that. That's all I know. She's good. not the person that raised me. And uh, I'll, I'll find your I'm buyer. Say anything I'll find any more than that. So she just wanted her her money, whatever, $10,000. She didn't care about me. 
And I said, Mom, I put $50,000. I redid all the underpinning. The foundation, the whole place is 100% solid. It was all swooped in and sagging and lowered, and it was just falling apart. They're ready to condemn it. So I, I worked on it the first three months. I put new posts underneath it, and I got new beams down below. I got beams up in here, and I got a six by six. I got a thousand dollars with the six by sixes just for the structural posts. Right. I mean, at this point, yeah, I do just want out. I really do, but I want to make sure that I'm going to get my money, and Mom's going to get some. And so yeah. I mean, but the, she's the only person on the deed, right? Yeah, but my stuff filed. Uh, yes. Oh, wait. Yes, but my paperwork, our contract, contractual agreement is recorded at the courthouse. Okay. And it's very, it's very legal and very binding. We're fifty-fifty on this property. Okay. So, what I can do is, is because this is this is where we were. So really, I just like to go back to where we were because honestly, I think this is like six months ago, and you probably would have your money. Yeah, you probably would have your money like six months ago. Um, we were at 80,000. So if you're good with 80,000, then I can do that. And then uh, the just only thing I just, just for 2403. Yes. Just for 2403. You can't do 90. I mean, I put 50 grand into it. I, I we bought it for 50 and I put 50 into it. I don't mind losing 10, but you know, I don't even mind. I don't even mind just getting 20 mom gets 20. If you could do 90. I mean, that, the, it's, it's a, the, the issue with 90 was, is that that's what we originally agreed to. And then when we came out and we saw it, we had to come back and renegotiate at 80 because of the condition. And so that's why I'm saying, instead of doing that, I don't want to do that again, because that's what upset right. you guys. So you want to buy it for 80 grand, the house 2403, and then oh. I can keep the lot over there. Is it good or not? Yeah, you guys can keep twenty. You guys can keep twenty four oh five. I just want twenty four oh three. All right. Well, when would you want to? When would the, when would when would you be able to do the cash thing? And I would, and you could guarantee me I get mine and mom gets hers. So there's no problems because if you can do that, I'm good. I can send you a contract now, and then I need to open up escrow with the title, and with the holidays and stuff, it's probably going to be mid to late January before we can close. That'd be fine, but could you, I'm, I am so fucking broke. Is there any way you could put a little something down so I don't have to think about nothing, I just move out? I, I can't, I, get, I can't give it, I can't give it to, no, I appreciate the honesty, but I can't give it to you because, I mean, what if there was a lien on the title and then I don't get to close? I mean, I'm never going to get my money back from you. I can put earnest money down at title, but I can't give you money directly, no. Okay. Um, I can listen. I can try to get it closed quicker. I, I will try to get it closed quicker. But we have to wait on title. And as soon as title is clear, then we're good to close. So, well, the title, there's only, if there's one, if there's anything, if I take, take me out of the picture, there might be one person, mom, there's some people in the McCabe's or something. They did something for $1,000. I don't know what the hell she did. Right. I don't know what my mom has done. So that would be the only people that would have anything to be paid out of the deal. Okay. That's well, it. that'll come up on title and then we'll get that cleared up. And that comes out of the closing proceeds. So if there's $1,000, then they just pay the McCabe's their $1,000 and then we just move on. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get a closing on ASAP then. All right. Uh, well, so I mean, now, RJ, you and I are working together. Is that correct right now? Correct. And you're going to make sure I get money? Yes. Okay. Mom, if, if there's 50 owed at the Wells Fargo. So if she gets uh, half and I get half, we would both be happy. Okay. okay. So what I'm going to do is, is I need your email where I can send you the contract. And then I'm going to call my guy there locally and see when he can get out there to come walk the property just to verify it's in the same condition it was last time we saw it. Are you guys... Some windows got broken. Oh, that's fine. I, I don't care about the windows. We were going to probably fix those anyways. So I just need him to come see it and just verify that, hey, it's still standing and it hasn't burned down. Okay? Nope. All right. All right. So text me over your email address and I'll get that sent over to you right now. Okay? Okay. Um, you just called me. So is that the number you want me to text to? Correct. Okay. So I'm going to uh, text you my email address and you're going to send me a some contract. Paperwork. Correct. Yes, sir. And it's, it's going to clearly state that I get 50% and mom gets 50% of the profit each pay, guaranteed by you. We, we, we have I, to do that with title. Title's going to have to do that. I cannot do that. No. Because title has to do that based off of what is recorded down at the, the county. I can't guarantee you 
that I'm going to pay you 50% of the profits on a property that, I mean. No, just make sure that mom and I each get paid equally according to what we're talking about. That's all. Because you're the buyer, you have that authority. I don't have that authority. Title's going to have to tell you what, how that gets resorted. What I'm telling you is I'm giving you $80,000 for the property, and it's going to go to the appropriate people, whether that's Wells Fargo gets paid off, you get your money, your mom gets money, and the McCabe's get their money. That will be dealt with with title. I can't guarantee you a certain dollar amount that you are going to get paid because I don't know that to be a fact. So mom and I can work everything out Correct. with the title company. Yes. That'll be no problem. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. RJ, so where are you at? I'm in Fort Worth, okay, Te I'm in Fort Worth Texas. You're in Texas. It's nice to meet you. Nice Thanks to meet you. Now, you're ready to move forward by it for 80 grand. No questions, no bullshit, nothing. Yes, sir. I'll send you over the contract right now. Okay, you would. I'm going to send you over the contract right now as soon as you give me that email. Okay? All right. I'll hang up and I'll send you my email and then I'll... Uh, Wait for you to send the contract, and then uh, what do you want me to do? You sign it? Yeah, it's just docu sign. Yeah. All right, I'll do a docu sign, then I'll call mom. You gonna send her one, or just me and you're happy? No, send me her email too. So I, I want both of you all to sign it. Okay, I'll uh, get a hold of her, and uh, I'll send you. She got my email right now. And okay. I'll just work on. I'll stay in touch with you, and then you and mom and I will be working moving forward to get uh, get out behind it. Okay. All right, sounds good. Thank you, Kevin. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Happy Bye. holidays. Happy holidays. Bye-bye. Hey, it's Ty there. Yes, sir. Hey, Ty. This is RJ Bates calling you about your property there on Sloan. Hey, how are you, sir? Good. Hey, you entered on my website saying that you're looking to sell that property. Are you still looking to get rid of it? Yeah, price is right. All right. I got you. What's the right price? What are you offering? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know anything about the property, so I just wanted to see, hey, you know, you got tenant occupied property. What's the rent rate? What's the condition? What's your asking price? And see if we can do some business. Um, so uh, the tenants are in there until July. Um, so your tenant talked about doing another year already. Um, still, of course, kind of up in the air on that until we get closer to it. Right. But, uh, um, you know, looking to get about 135 for it with it being right, right there next to the college. Mm -hmm. uh, condition. Um, so, I mean, could use a little bit of updating, but, I mean, as is right now, it's, of course, it's being rented out. So, how much are they paying a month? A thousand a month. Okay. And when you talk about doing another year with them, is it at a thousand still, or would they be increasing? For them, I'd probably keep it just because they've been pretty solid with me. Mm -hmm. um, but new tenants, everything around there is at about full fifty. Uh, I mean, it's only a block away from the college, so right. Um, but if uh, if they do decide to leave, then then that's what I'll be ready for. The one just right next door. Um, yeah. just I think went for like 13 or something in August here, so um, trying to undercut them by 50 bucks, kind of mm -hmm. to a college kid, you know, makes it just that much better. So, but uh, the roof's in, in perfect, con uh, I shouldn't say perfect, but uh, you know, really good shape. I think it's only, I think it was five years whenever I bought it. And it's I've had it for two years, so what seven year seven year old roof. Right. Um, pretty spacious backyard there. Gotcha. So I see a property. I mean, I, I see properties going in that price range, but they're kind of like remodeled or larger. Because you're what nine hundred and seventy six square feet. Yes, sir. I got one for nine thirty six. It's listed for one twenty nine. It's not really remodeled. The sea light. Have you been in any of those houses? Are you looking on like Realtor dot com and stuff right now? No, I've got a couple of different programs that allows me to essentially pull comps. So I'm just looking at the pictures of their MLS listings. Okay. 
Um, I'm not sure if you've been in any of those or not, but uh, I went and looked at a, a couple that are for sale. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, some of them got pretty pretty bad foundation issues. There's one I was looking at. It's uh, 110 right now. Kind of a little further off from the college, but uh, you walk on the floor and it's like a damn springboard. <laughs> right. I was like, good God. So, um, you know, all the other houses right around there, uh, there's one that's kind of a fairly re- new remodel that uh, I know the guy that, that just finished remodeling it, and they're asking, I think, 165 and it's, uh, I think, about 150 square foot less than, you know, like this one. Right. One, so... So the one that's for 110, are you talking about the one on Clint, uh, North Clinton Street? Uh, like a little, little brown house? It's like beige and, and brown on the outside. I don't think I've looked at this one yet, but... Uh... I'm going to say, I, I mean, this thing has been listed for 84 days, and I don't know what this realtor is thinking. I mean, 110, it clearly needs to be rehabbed on the outside. And, then, you know, I love it. You know, here's your opportunity. You looking for a flip? It's like, <laughs> where, oh where, where's my money? <laughs> How do I make money with this? I mean, <laughs> so the, the, the hard part with yours is because, I mean, I've done a lot of deals in Stephenville. Uh, the, the hard part is, is like, if it's rented for a thousand and I pay one thirty five, it's it's not really a good cash flow metric for me, right? I mean, it, you really like worst case scenario, you you want to be at one percent. So whatever the rent is is one percent, and that's like worst case scenario. And so in this circumstance, it's like if it's rented for a thousand. And you're one one thirty five. I'm I'm upside down, and I'm not really gain. You know, there's not really a chance for like a whole lot of equity capture there either. Um, now, are you a cash? Are you a wholesaler or fix and flip or what? Uh, what's your business? Well, I'm a little bit of all things. Um, okay. You know, we do wholesale, we do fix and flip, uh, rental, seller finance, any of the above. I mean. All the way down to we own a country club here in Fort Worth and oh, nice. Regan, we own a brokerage and December third we were on A and E for zombie house flipping. So we do a little bit of everything. So um I you know, in, in this circumstance, it's just it's tough. I mean, would you be open to doing something creative like seller finance? Do you have a mortgage on this? I do. So seller finance. I, I really don't like to do seller finance if you know, if, if the seller has a mortgage, I mean, um, yeah, I just got a hell of a job. My mortgage rate's only 2.5 on it, so I picked it up at a steal, right? How much do you owe on the mortgage? I don't know. I think last I checked was like 69,000 or so. Oh, I wish you owed more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you owed more, I'd be like, well, maybe I could do a sub two and then. And, and just bring some cash but i mean if, in that case it's like damn i'm bringing <laughs> half cash half sub two i mean because the rate's great but it, it kind of defeats the so, purpose there is that the uh because i watched that uh, was it deeper or bigger pockets or whatever yeah yeah yeah. and, and they were talking about actually being able to take over us seller's mortgage at their current rate and then I guess just bring cash to the to the table. Yeah. Is that what you were talking about? Yeah, exactly. Was that with Pace Morby? I can't remember, but with all these houses from what two, three years ago that are all locked into yep. these one ninety nine, you know, three percent interest rates, being able to just take over their mortgage at that current rate and then just you know so essentially what it is, is you're purchasing the property subject to the existing mortgage. And so in that circumstance, yeah, I mean, now there's a, there's a couple of things. There's not as just as simple as that. I mean, you have to, 
a make sure that you know the bank doesn't call the the do on sell clause and then also you know you were taking on the responsibility of making sure that you make that payment every month you know and so it does get a little bit scary when it's becoming as uh, a known strategy where there's a lot of people out there doing it because i don't want it to get uh regulated and scrutinized and you know the government get involved with it you know and so it, sometimes i get worried when i hear like yeah i saw that on bigger pockets you know and it's like oh geez man everybody in the world's gonna be trying to buy property sub too now um but because that's kind of what happened in texas with lease options is you know one bad apple went out there and messed it up and then they brought down heavy regulations on us you know and so but yeah that's, that's essentially what you're doing is you're you're taking over so for example say i said hey let me take over your seventy thousand dollar mortgage and then i'll just pay you sixty five thousand dollars cash so instead of me needing to bring one hundred thirty five thousand dollars cash i'm just giving you um you know the the difference there but the the downside of that is is for you is that your mortgage isn't paid off so you still have that liability out there and and you're just giving me the trust that i'm gonna you know pay that now that's protected through contracts and the language that we put in the documentation so typically now there's a lot of different reasons why you would do a sub two and why a seller would do it but typically what i tell people is it's because of some sort of uh financial distress situation or low to no equity so for example say you didn't have a lot of equity but you need to sell fast and i could come in and take over your your mortgage at a two percent interest and i can still rent it out that would make perfect sense right. um because i mean your your interest is so low on this that's why you can rent it at a thousand dollars a month i mean look well, at what my payment's only like five so right but think about what my payment would be if i you know put one hundred thirty-five thousand into this right i'm going to be losing money every month and so that's where i'm like well i can't i just can't do that i see where you're coming from as far as the price goes to a certain degree i mean i don't know what the condition is i mean if it's been rented out for a couple of years um i'm sure by now the carpet needs torn up yeah there's there's the original hard my original plan was to pull the carpet up and refinish the hardwood floors but they're like oh well we got dogs and everything and that's kind of my first rental property that uh when i started out with and uh oh like well fuck, screw it right the carpet, you know and then they're like well we want to stay here another year well okay <laughs> you know so i just happen to have the time to go in and actually update it because i bought it and then Pretty much put a or sell or a or red sign in there, and uh, it was right there. Prime college, all the college kids moving in, so it just kind of all fell into place. So yeah, um, but looking to to invest more, but uh, I mean, so what's the reason? What's got you wanting to sell this one? Just so you can capture your equity. Kind of, uh, just more looking into. I don't know, I guess more opportunity, really, trying to partner up with, with more people and trying to really network. Uh, you know, I got, I think a pretty good chunk of change on the set on the side, you know, but, you know, it sure doesn't help to, to have extra, you know, cash in hand, so. Right. Well, I mean, in that circumstance, I mean, there there are a couple, there is a, a very creative way that we could do a deal um which is i do buy the house sub two so i take over that mortgage and then you sell or finance me the difference which because you're that's that doesn't necessarily sound like you need the cash if you've got cash on hand right now uh but this could get you out of the liability of needing to manage uh tenants and toilets and all of that and you just kind of go into more of a passive cash flow route where you don't have to manage anything you're just getting paid on you know what is the difference there sixty five thousand dollars of just passive income at that point in time 
that would be like the uber creative way where you're still getting your number and we would just have to work out what kind of terms those would look like where it can still cash flow on my side of things ultimately what i would need to do is, is see if that tenant if they're willing to renew you know in the summer if they're going to be willing to pay more and then that way we could work out how you could get enough of a monthly payment where it makes sense for you right the problem is, is I, would, I would need you know kind of that cash equity so you're yeah. wanting the cash you're wanting that equity right just because then that that way then that allows me to buy because really what i want to get to is more like a fourplex okay um but here local to stephenville or anywhere anywhere really kind of because i'm in eastland so i'm pretty centralized as far as wichita falls dallas fort worth stephenville i really don't want to go all the way up to waco area um but you know abilene kind of the main main points there um you know, we got family that's only 30 minutes away from, from Wichita Falls, so if there was a right. pull that needed plunge or sink, you know, snake down or something, you know, then they could run up and do it, you know, versus property management. I don't think I'm quite ready for that. That quite quite of a jump yet, you know. Oh, the, I, well, what I was saying anywhere, I mean, I was talking about like out of state. I got a fourplex in uh, West Virginia. I would actually be, I'd be willing to sell or finance myself, but it needs work done to it for sure. Yeah, that's kind of the problem is something that far away is hard to, to get to, you know? Yeah, absolutely. That's part of my issue right now. Why I want to get rid of it. <laughs> uh, all right, let me look at this a little bit deeper. I can send you some pictures of before rent and everything before they all moved in. Um, yeah, I mean, I give you some empty pictures. But I just don't think I'm gonna be able to get the 135. I mean, cash. You know, that's that's the the problem there. Um, it just like I said, there's not a ton of equity there, and it, the, the cash flow doesn't make sense. So from like both aspects of like. Look at underwriting the deal and analyzing it, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense for me to pay that. I gotcha. And I mean, you can understand that. I mean, you probably you probably wouldn't pay one hundred thirty five thousand for this house, you know. Right. But I also understand where you are. You're kind of at the place now where it's like, well, you want to get that equity out to go do something else, but you don't need to. Now, I would say. I mean, the, the flip side is, is we could list the property for you and get your money out that way if that's something you want to do. But it, I don't know if that's something you're looking to do. Not really. Uh, I, mean, I mean, it's not really a burden on me right now, you know. I'm not right. really looking to get out of it. Uh, just really kind of waiting for, for that kind of a deal to, to come along. But Right. Uh, but I do kind of like your creative financing. That's kind of the first time I've ever heard of that. Well, not really heard of it, but really somebody kind of really bringing it to the table. Well, I mean, listen, that's one of the ways that you can acquire a lot more properties where you're not having to use this equity that you have in this deal. I mean, just to be quite frank with you, I don't use any of my equity to buy future properties. I mean, that's. What do you mean by that? Well, like if I own a property and I've got a hundred thousand dollars equity in it, I'm not going to go sell that property and then turn around and dump that hundred thousand dollars into another property. That's my money. I'm going to go. I'm going to go find a way to buy another property with someone else's property <laughs> or somebody else's money. I mean, I mean, just to be quite frank, like in this circumstance, if I will, if I wanted to buy this property, the only way I'm going to buy your property today is, is if I can somehow creatively make it work, whether that's through sub two and seller finance, Okay, that's not going to work then i'm probably not going to be your buyer so then i'm just going to go talk to the next person that's 
probably in a worse financial position where they would be willing to do a deal creatively with me. And so from that perspective, what I would say is, is if this is what you're looking to do, then maybe you need to learn how to do these types of negotiations where you're not using that own money, your own money on that. That's the money that you have earned through the, your acquisition. And that should be yours to keep, not to, to just sink it into the next property. That's a slow, hard grind that you're going to be going down where you can rapidly grow your portfolio this way. And it's how we've been able to do it. Like, for example, when I was telling you, you know, we own a country club here. It's called Woodhaven Country Club. You can look it up. I mean, we bought that seller finance with no money down and no 0% interest. Really? And so why? Because the seller was motivated and they needed to. Did we overpay for it? Yeah, but I was willing to overpay for it because we got the terms that we wanted. Of course. And so that's the same thing here where, I mean, realistically, like that sounds like you're a pretty intelligent guy. You've got a good deal on this one. I mean, you essentially have 50% equity on the property, you know? Sounds like you just need to kind of educate yourself there a little bit on on how to get these deals a little bit more creatively. I mean, are you doing um, any direct to seller marketing right now? To be honest with you, I mean, I just kind of just got into the market. I did a lot of fix and flips uh, back in high school with my with my dad. Right. Blackford uh, houses, vacant houses, and stuff like that. But uh, now I'm just trying to kind of get back into it and. Uh, you know, this is like I said, my first property, but I'm trying to figure out how to leverage this property to buy another property, but, uh, trying to go that route. Wait, are you full time in this or do you have a job somewhere else? No, I still have a nine to five, you know? Gotcha. But, uh, you know, try to build that passive income so I don't have to work till I'm 65, you know? Right. So like, for example, one of the tools that I use is called Speed to Lead. So the, the website that you filled this out on, it's essentially a marketplace where they run the, the Google pay-per-click ads. You go in there, you fill it out, and then I paid $226 to have this conversation with you. I gotcha. So I bought the lead because it's Stephenville, Texas. It says, tired of being a landlord, you know, tenant occupied, and, you know, it's not listed. So I'm like, well, this sounds, I'm willing to pay $226 to have this conversation. I jump in there. I call you. It gives me the all the information. And now I'm, I exclusively own this lead. So, like, that's a great tool for you to use in the future where you could go in there and be doing the same thing. You could put in all of the different locations that you would want to potentially buy properties. And it could even say on there, is the seller willing to discuss creative finance? And if it says yes, that's where you go in knowing, hey, am I going to discuss seller finance? Am I going to discuss sub two? And that's how you get into deals where you're not using that money. You're just getting in there and, and getting on the terms that you want, which is ultimately not using any of your own money and then you just keep the money that you have in this one what is the what is the point getting rid of this one just to go buy another one you had to get into a four place but you can get into a four place right now you don't need to sell this one i mean hell the four place i own in west virginia i got the guy to sell it seller finance it for me you know i funny enough i actually just posted a tiktok today of that's that call with that seller so yeah um, but listen, I, I'm going to send you a link okay. and if you're interested, we, uh, we do something that's called the, the titanium crucible. It's our education day. It's nine 97. We do it like once every six weeks. It's two days at the country club and we show everything. Like what I just talked about there was speed lead. We show you how we use it. We talk about sub two. We talk about seller finance. We go into even more detail. The other thing that you should be doing is, is talking to sellers. And if it's not a great deal for you, it's not something you want to keep, then wholesale it. Like that's, that's super easy cash flow. 
And when you're talking about right now of, hey, I'm going to sell this property, an asset that you own, so you can capture $60,000, but you could have a conversation and sell a piece of paper to get $10,000. Think about how much faster and the velocity in which you can move when you're trying to do this. And then, then you start thinking about how much are you making at your nine to five. Most people aren't making that much at their nine to five where it's like, dude, all I need to do is like one or two deals a month. And I make more just wholesaling than I do at my W2. And then that frees up, you know, 40, 50 hours a week. And then the next thing you know, you're taking down two or three properties a month through creative finance. And you're still making just as much money through the wholesaling. Okay. So. I like it. Uh, listen, dude, I'm I'm the guy that is mm -hmm. like anti. Yeah. That's staying. That's, uh, that's pretty interesting. I'm I'm the guy that's anti staying at your your W two just because that's what you need to do to to maintain you know your your current living situation. It's like obviously you're wanting to buy real estate so you can create some sort of financial freedom for yourself. Then if you know it's the route, then at some point in time you just gotta say I'm gonna go all in on this, and that's what I did back in 2014 2015, and now it's like. We've done like 1,500 deals. We own a freaking golf course and houses everywhere. And, <laughs> and then to be honest with you, we've almost never used any of our own money. So I just sent you the link to the to the event. It's up in Fort Worth at the Woodhaven Country Club. Um, definitely got referrals for people that have attended if you want to talk to any of them. Um, but yeah, man, I, it sounds like something that would be really good for you because if you're listening to bigger pockets, that's like, that's the, the first step in the light They're they're wetting your whistle, but this is like, we give you tactical advice on like, this is what we do every single right. day. You know, I mean, I got my whole team out on the floor. They're on the phone talking to buyers and sellers right now. And just to be honest with you, I just had time this afternoon. And so I was like, I'm, I haven't been on the phone in a couple of months talking to anybody. So, and now I've been doing it for the past couple of hours and I've just had a freaking blast talking to people. So <laughs> I just keep going, but yeah, man, I definitely check out the event. And like I said, on this property, the probably the best thing that I can do for you is just, if, if you really want to sell it, we can list it for you. But to be honest with you, just hearing your situation, I would advise you don't sell it. Let's educate you on how you can keep that and still do what you want to do, which if it's you want to find a fourplex, then come to the crucible and I'll show you how to find whatever, however many freaking fourplexes you want to find. Yes, sir. All right, buddy. And what was your name again? My name's RJ Bates. RJ Bates. Perfect. Thank you so much, sir. All right, man. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Okay.